The Interpretation Act of Canada, Article 8.1. It states that both the common law and the civil law are equally authoritative and recognized sources of the law of property and civil rights in Canada. The Civil Code of Quebec. The Civil Code compromises a body of rules which, in all matters within the letter, spirit, or object of its provisions, lays down the jeu comment, expressively or by implication. Jeu comment is common law. Looking into the Interpretation Act of Canada, Article 8.2, we find that it states and it teaches that common law is authoritative in Canada. So we know, based upon that enactment, that Canada has to recognize common law, that common law is an authoritative operation of law that exists in Canada. Now, within common law, many will claim that one of the expressions or one of the rights to common law is that everyone has the right to life and that everyone has the right to liberty. Now, they'll go on and say, my liberty means that I'm not accountable to any of the laws in Canada. And they'll say, none of the enactments or the regulations that have been given force of law, I don't have to follow them because I'm following common law and I have liberty and I have freedom. And they'll state that all those enactments and regulations we don't have to follow. Now, other people who understand common law will say that murdering is part of a common law and stealing is part of common law. You see, the government didn't create this law that we shouldn't murder one another. Depending on your internal views, how you view the world, you might believe that thou shalt not murder was a commandment from God or elsewhere. But nevertheless, we tend to say that it was man who came together and said, you know what, we should not murder one another, we should not steal from one another. These farmers out there are working hard all day. We don't have the right to steal from him. If we want the same, well. So these are common laws. It's not created by the government. The government didn't create these laws. Now we, we run into a little problem. And we run into illogical thinking here. Okay, because there are a number of so-called individuals on the internet. And I will not name any names. But they run around teaching that they are walking or living under common law and that no laws in Canada are applicable to them. That the Criminal Code of Canada is not applicable to them, the Constitution Act of Canada is not applicable for them, and they go on, and they say they're just free like a bird and nothing's applicable to them. Now, that's kind of illogical thinking, and why I say that is just if you think about one, one right or one law that stems from common law, and that being thou shalt not murder, or you shouldn't murder. So what happens then? If somebody murders, that's a common law right. That's a common law. You can't murder. The government didn't create it, but the government recognizes it. They agree. When you look into the laws of Canada, the government's laws in the Criminal Code of Canada says that you shouldn't murder. And if someone murders, then they're entitled to a punishment. When you look into the Criminal Code of Canada, you see that it says you shouldn't steal. And if you steal, then you're worthy of a punishment. These are not created laws by the government, enactments and regulations. These are recognized common law being expressed within the Criminal Code of Canada. The Constitution Act of Canada, 1982, Article 7. Everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of the person. This is from the Canadian Charter of Rights Decision from April 2005. Everyone, and they're talking about Article 7 of the Constitution Act of Canada, everyone read as a whole, it appears that Section 7 was intended to confer protection on a singular human level. A plain, common sense reading of the phrase, everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of the person serves to underline the human element involved. Only human beings can enjoy these rights. Everyone then must be read in the light of the rest of the section and defined to 
exclude corporations and other artificial entities incapable of enjoying life, liberty or security of the person, and include only human beings. When we look into the Constitution Act of Canada 1982 Article 7, we see that the decision from the justice system, they are aware of this fact, that Article 7 refers to only men and women, and the plural of that being human beings. So the rights that are expressed in Article 7, everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of the person. This is being expressed for the human being, for the men and women. And this is an expression of common law. It's an expression of natural rights or human rights. The government didn't create the right to the fact that everyone has the right to life. The government didn't create the law that everyone has the right to liberty. This is just a natural right, it's a natural understanding that we as men and women, we as human beings, uh, hold with inside of ourselves. This article of law in the Constitution Act 1982, number 7, it only refers to human being. It excludes artificial persons and it excludes corporations. So, people who, who declare and people who say that the Constitution Act of Canada has nothing to do with me, it's only about an incorporated body, it's only about an employee of Canada, they run up against a troubled situation here because the justice system, and if you understand where this Constitution Act of Canada comes from, is bringing forth the fact that Article 7 is not for the employee of Canada. Article 7 is not for an incorporated individual, a corporation, or an other artificial entity. That it's strictly here for that human being. So when you sit there and cross your hands and say, oh no, no, the enactments don't apply to me, uh, the criminal code doesn't apply to me, I only follow common law, I'm free like a bird, you're sounding foolish because first of all you, you need to realize that common law has to be enforced and for something to be enforced there has to be a recognized source of law or source of authority which we can point to and say, here's the, the authority, here's your obligation. But a lot of people are walking around and saying, oh, nothing applies to me. Criminal Code, Constitution Act, doesn't apply to me. Well, you're selling yourself short. Because here you see in Article 7, it says that this only applies for men and women, for human beings, and the rights that they bring forth are common law rights. What? The right to life, the right to liberty, and that also mystical one that everyone wants to understand, the security of the person. That's coming forth only for the human being. Again, we have those that are out there thinking and teaching, well, nothing applies to me. No criminal code of Canada, no enactment, no constitution act of Canada, nothing applies to me. And uh, I'm not an employee of the gov government, so therefore I'm free to do whatever the heck I want. So, push away the self-righteousness because I know, like, you know, those who, who talk like this and live like this, they would, would never, never, ever steal and they would never, ever, ever commit murder, but nevertheless, Let's say for some odd reason you guys did take actions like that. You stole and you murdered. Well, according to your understanding and your reasoning, there would be no way to enforce a punishment upon you, right? For the Criminal Code of Canada doesn't apply to you. It only applies to the employees of Canada. It only applies to artificial persons of Canada. So if you in your capacity as a man or a human being were to stand up and steal and get caught, you could say, oh, you can't do nothing to me. I'm a man, I, I, I have my rights and you can't enforce stealing, according to my logic. That's ridiculous what you're thinking there. Uh, you go on further to say that, well, if you are an employee, or if you are that legal person then, then the Criminal Code of Canada would apply to you and you could be charged with murder or stealing. It's so ridiculous because it's kind of crazy, the, the, the logic that's going on here, because you're saying that well, first of all, you have to qualify in order to be a legal person or an employee of the government. And then if you qualify in that capacity and then you steal or commit murder, then you can get in trouble. Then they can apply the law to you. But if you stand as a man or a human being and you steal and murder, well, guess what? Nobody can enforce nothing upon you because some people are teaching that that criminal code of Canada only applies to the employee or the legal person deception and dangerous. We're looking into the interpretation section of the Criminal Code of Canada. Everyone, person, 
and owner and similar in expressions include Her Majesty and an organization. Black Laws, the ninth edition, the word include. Include. To contain as a part of something, not a complete, a part. The participle including typically indicates a partial list. Black Laws, seventh edition. Person. A human being, an entity, such as a corporation. Looking into the Criminal Code of Canada, the interpretation section, it states that everyone, person, and owner, and similar expressions include, notice that word now, include Her Majesty and a corporation. Now the word include means that what was listed here, Her Majesty and a corporation, is not an exhaustive list. It doesn't end. It's not closed. Whatever else can go into this list, you can place it, you have to place it. It's an operation of law that you must perform because they left it open by the word include. The list is left open. So every one person and owner and similar expressions include Her Majesty and a corporation, but there's other things that can be placed here. Now when we look at the word person, we find the word person breaks down to mean two things. Either the human being, that man or woman, or the legal person. They have already included the legal person through the corporation. So what is left now is human being. So the human being should be included here, the man and the woman. Because this list was left open and whatever else qualifies, must be placed into the list. Now the human being comes into the criminal code of Canada and thereby the common law such as don't steal, don't murder can now be enforced upon the human being and not just upon that corporation or that legal entity. Because remember, the way some are teaching they say the Criminal Code of Canada only applies to corporations and Her Majesty. And you have to first qualify as an employee of Canada or as an artificial being, commit murder, then the Criminal Code will apply against you. Ridiculous. Here, the Criminal Code leaves this expression open that the human being or the man and the woman can be added to this list. And therefore, common law, enforceable laws come into play such as don't murder, don't steal. Some would have you to believe or would like you to think or reason like this. Well, if I commit murder or if I steal, they can't enforce nothing upon me because I'm a man and a human being. And the criminal code, it doesn't apply to me. I'm standing in my capacity or designation as a man. The criminal code only applies to an employee of Canada or to a legal artificial person. So therefore, if I commit these actions, the criminal code does nothing against me. However, what Canada says, what common law says, what natural law says, what human rights say, is that common law is authoritative in Canada. And it is a common law right or a natural law that says, thou shalt not murder, don't murder, and don't steal. And these rights, or these laws, are expressed in domestic law. They weren't created by the government, as some would have you think or reason. Oh, the government created these laws. The government didn't create, don't murder, don't steal. The government recognizes these laws. The government enforces these laws. And these laws come from the tradition of common law, from the tradition of natural rights. Don't get deceived by those that are out there trying to tell you that this code here doesn't apply to you. Let me tell you something. Go out there and do a little bit of this and see how fast the peace officer comes and puts you in handcuffs and brings you before the judge and claim all that you want to claim of your common law rights and nothing applies to me and they'll put you in jail rightfully so. Now, along these lines, right, 
Okay, you have these teachers who tell you, well, put your, they'll make a story about how they deal with the police officers and all that, and they say, I tell the police officer, put your hat on before you come and deal with me, because I want you in the role of, of peace officer. Very rude anyways, the way they're talking like they're some god or something, but nevertheless, that's what they say, and they say, well, they want the, the policeman or, or the individual who's playing that role to come forward with a hat on, so he's playing the role of peace officer. So if he's playing the role of peace officer, right, and he's enforcing common law, as you claim, well, where are the rights or where are the laws that this peace officer is enforcing? Are they coming from a cookbook? Are they coming from, I don't know, a, a Super Nintendo machine? No, they're coming from the Criminal Code of Canada. The peace officer is enforcing the common law, natural law, if you will even go farther and say human rights that are expressed in the criminal code, and that's their duty as peace officers. But yet, these teachers who claim, oh, we want you to come and deal with us as peace officers, will then on the next breath go, huh, the criminal code of Canada is an enactment, it doesn't apply to us unless you're an employee or a legal person, without even realizing what they're saying and what they're trying to teach individuals who are listening to them. In one breath, you're saying the peace officer has the right to come, and enforce common law, where does this common law stem from? Well, it's kind of obvious it stems from the Criminal Code of Canada because we find common law in there. And not only that, we find it opening up in the interpretation section to include the human being, the man or the woman, just to make sure for that one fact that common law can be enforced here in Canada. Why? Because Canada has the obligation and it does recognize it as an authoritative law. one of the expressions or one of the rights to common law is that everyone has the right to life and that everyone has the right to liberty. Now they'll go on and say my liberty means that I'm not accountable to any of the laws in Canada and they'll say none of the enactments or the regulations that have been given force of law I don't have to follow them because I'm following common law and I have liberty and I have freedom and they'll state that all those enactments and regulations we don't have to follow. Now, comment. Expressively or by implication. Je comment is common law. Looking into the Interpretation Act of Canada, Article 8.2, we find that it states and it teaches that common law is authoritative in Canada. So we know, based upon that enactment, that Canada has to recognize common law, that common law is an authoritative operation of law that exists in Canada. Now, within common law, many will claim that we should not steal from one another. This farmers out there are working hard all day. We don't have the right to steal from him if we want the same. Well, so these are common laws, it's not created by the government. The government didn't create these laws. Now, we, we run into a little problem and we run into illogical thinking here. Okay, because there are a number of so-called individuals on the internet, and I will not name any names, but they run around teaching that they are walking or living under common law, and that no law, other people who understand common law, will say that murdering is part of a common law, and stealing is part of common law. You see, the government didn't create this law that we shouldn't murder one another. Depending on your internal views, how you view the world, you might believe that thou shalt not murder was a commandment from God or elsewhere. But nevertheless, we tend to say that it was man who came together and said, you know what, we should not murder one another. The Interpretation Act of Canada, Article 8.1, it states that both the common law and the civil law are equally authoritative and recognized sources of the law of property and civil rights in Canada. The Civil Code of Quebec. The Civil Code compromises a body of rules which, in all matters within the letter, spirit, or object of its provisions, lays down the jeu.